bring it out. And then on the Titans' first play from scrimmage, DeMarco Murray, 75-yard TD run. More flags. Yeah, I love that. Taylor Lewan, he's getting after somebody right now. Yeah, you come in and you make sure you send a message. Now, they've got to be careful because this crew has, what is it, Kenny? Over, they have half five the of, ejections. Five this of the ten ejections in the NFL this season from Jeff Triplett's crew. So I, I love the fact right now Taylor Lewan gets up. He's, he's not letting anybody touch his quarterback like that. Everybody's going to be protective of your quarterback in this situation. Four penalty markers on the field as Triplett and his crew sort things out. There's Latroy Guyon, who made contact with Marcus Spariota. Wow, wow, it looks like Taylor Lewan may have been ejected. He's coming off the field. There are three fouls on the play. En encroachment, number 60, defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, number 68 of the de defense. That penalty is accepted, hitting the quarterback after the play is dead. After the play is over, personal foul, number 77 of the offense. Contact with an official, and he is disqualified from the game. Wow. We will penalize, we will penalize both 15-yard fouls, and it will be first and 25 for the offense. So Taylor Lewan has been ejected for contact with an official. As we bring in Mike Pereira from Los Angeles. Mike, what did you see? It, it's interesting, you know, obviously something done with the official here as he's trying to break it up. And, and here's the actual issue. Both of these penalties, 15-yard penalties, are going to be assessed because if there is contact with the game official, that does not count as multiple fouls where you enforce one of the two. Since one involves contact with the official, you're going to get 30 yards worth of penalties here. The contact was made with the back judge, Steve Freeman. Yeah, it should be a net zero, though, right? We have the we have the neutral zone infraction by Latroy Guyon. Then we have the unnecessary roughness, not on 68, but on 98. Latroy. The third down, only a three-man rush. And now Kessler looking around, and he's still on his feet. And he fires to the end zone, and it is incomplete. And now two penalty flags come in as there's a fight. A fight is broken out in the 30-yard line. You see him moving around, Kessler, and that movement. Remember, he's a big-time basketball player in high school, so he has athletic ability. Now we're going to take a look at where all the flags came from. That's and it Cameron looks like Irving and David Irving, no relation. So we have Irving on Irving crime going on. Right? Cam Irving the center, David Irving a defensive tackle, they get After tangled the play, up. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 94, 95 of the defense. Also, personal foul, number, number 74 of the offense. Their actions disqualified both players from the game. So now your starting center is gone for Cleveland as we see the end of this. Cam Irving and David Irving. David Irving, number 95 in blue. Cam Irving, number 74 in white. Starting center, they just said disqualified, right, Chris? Well, and the starting center is now gone. To me, that's about discipline. And you want to know why some things are 0 and 8. And that's a microcosm of why sometimes you're 0 and 8. Because Cam Irving is a good football player. And if both of them are disqualified, that hurts the Browns. And Cam Irving has to have the discipline to let go of the face mask 
and not pull it off. That's that's indiscipline or undisciplined play, and nothing in the world, to, in my opinion, condones that type of behavior. You don't need it. Big first down for Washington. Rod Kelly trying to turn the corner and could not. A.J. Klein with help from K1 Short. Might be the last play of the quarter, although the clock is stopped and there is a flag down. Carolina manhandling the line of scrimmage in the running game. And Jordan Reed and Kurt Coleman are involved in a scuffle late. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 86, offense, throwing a punch and hitting the defender, 86, is disqualified from the game. Well, Reed felt he got cheap shotted by Trey Boston earlier, and this time, ooh. He throws a punch, and that'll get you ejected every time. Frustrating night, to say the least, for Jordan Reed. Well, Coleman was swinging, trying to get untangled from Reed. And that clearly irritated Reed. Leading to this touchdown. And a two-point game with 5.42 to go. San Francisco trying to rally from behind for the second week in a row. Seattle trying to hang on and carry momentum into the postseason. We are headed to break, but hold on a moment. We have some shoving and extracurricular with flags flying as well. This is what happens at the end of the season. You got two teams playing a hard-fought game, but going in different directions. A lot of frustration on the part of the 49ers and for the Seahawks. This is a team that is probably frustrated with the way they've performed this year in the sense of not playing the way they're capable of. Tony Carrenti getting in there, making sure that he didn't go any the farther. The extra point is good after the action. Personal foul, foul. unnecessary roughness, roughness. Defense, defense number 90. number 90, and number 90 has been disqualified wow. for his action. Jaron Reed, starting D tackle, thrown out of the game. And Frank Clark and Reed get together. The Seahawks might be 9-5-1, but there have been times where they've simply looked in disarray this year. All game. Thomas back deep. Nice punt. Thomas takes it out to 20. Comes away from Jeremy Lane up the sideline. The Anthony Thomas stays in bounds and takes it to the Seattle 40 yard line. And some extracurricular activity looked like Lockett took a swing at one of the Chiefs. There is a flag following the 41 yard return by DeAnthony Thomas. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 83 of the kicking team. The player is ejected. Yeah, he hit three on penalty. Ricardo Lockett took a swing at one of the Chiefs on the sidelines. There it is at Kurt Coleman. Lockett ejected from the game. The two guys again, you're fighting, you're working. You get all the way down and you get in on the tackle. And you're just, your emotions get away from me for a split second because Kurt Coleman comes in, gives you a little shove and pop. And you are out of the game and that is it. Your day is over. Yeah, you got to control your emotions, man. That that was a uh, that was uncalled for. I mean, I know, it, and Daryl, you did a great job of going and describing it. It's very frustrating out there, especially when you got two on one. I mean, but uh, you got to control yourself, and uh, we're not going to see him anymore today. So lock it to the locker room. Now, Bill Levy, the referee, has gone up to the hood to check out 
the spot. Let's see if Thomas stepped out of bounds. Looks yeah. like he did. They will add the penalty yardage on to the end of the play. It was initially a 41-yard return, but Mike Thomas stepped out of bounds earlier. Yeah, it looks like we're looking might got might have got <laughs> three right there. Consecutive steps out of bounds. I was so impressed him working that sideline because he worked just the six yards. I mean, he, he was about halfway to the numbers, went towards the middle of the field, came back, was able to get around and pick up some blockers and get down the sideline. In any event, it will be terrific field position for the Chiefs, who lead by four. Chiefs have won four straight, six of their last seven. Denver trailing St. Louis, 13-7 in the third quarter. Broncos in first place in the AFC West at 7-2. Chiefs 6-3. Here's Bill Levy. After reviewing the play, the runner did step out of bounds at the 29-yard line. With the timer for 3-16 on the game clock. We will enforce the 15-yard penalty from the 29. 83 is still ejected. Well done by Bill Levy and his crew cleaning that one up right there. So the Chiefs lose 32 yards on the return, but they get.